What's up, online campus? Are y'all excited? Are y'all ready? It's time for us to have some church. That's right, Pastor Javen here now, church, and we are excited that you are joining us for another live service. Do me a huge favor, tweet, post, text, tell everybody, tune in right now, we are live. There's a word in the house for you and your family. We're gonna be praying, we're gonna be leading in worship, and you need to be a part of it, but most importantly, you need to spread the good news. Do you know that that's part of your Christian responsibility to help evangelize the world? So do us a favor right now. If you have a Facebook page, take the link and post it on your page. If you have a family uh, Twitter or a text, Thread, I want you to take the link and put it on there right now and say, y'all need to hear the word today. <laughs> Just put it right in their face. They may not watch it right away or they may not join right away, but maybe they'll join later on. But let's share the gospel. Let's get the word out. And don't forget to make sure you comment down there in the comment section. I need to see some amens. I need to see some hallelujahs. And you know, I love a good hey anytime. All right. So let's go into our service right now and let's get ready to worship the Lord. I'm so excited to come to you in this year of the takeover. I'm Pastor Charlie. This is the Now Church. I'm so excited to, to teach this message, help you understand uh, just a little bit more about faith. Uh, shout out to Pastor Javen. Shout out to the Now Church. Thank you so much for the opportunity to come before you. Let's jump into a word of prayer, and then we're just going to jump right into it. Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity to talk to your people today, this evening, about faith. We thank you that this message is going to help somebody to understand even more how powerful they really are. We thank you that this is going to be a life-changing word for somebody under the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, I want you to like, subscribe, comment, be active in the chat. Make sure that you share this with somebody if, it gets, if you get something from it. Uh, make sure if you have questions, send them in. Uh, I just want to make sure I help you understand a little bit more about how powerful you really are. If you're taking notes on, on this teaching, the title is Stuart your faith. Steward your faith. Stewardship, by definition, is the conducting, managing, or supervising of something. So if we're, if we're stewarding our faith, it's our responsibility, it's our job to manage our faith. And as believers, our faith is our currency in the kingdom. And so without faith, we cannot please God. Without faith, we cannot see the things that God wants us to see uh, that, that we're going to receive by grace without faith. We cannot get those things. And so it's extremely important that you and I, as individuals, as believers, we manage our faith. We manage what we allow to come into our system. We manage what we allow to be around us. We manage the circles that we keep. We manage the conversations that we have. We manage the faith that we are given the opportunity to walk in on a daily basis. Let me give you a couple scriptures. First Peter 4.10, it says, Each of you uh, should, whatever gift you have received, serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in various forms. First Peter 4.10, Each of you should use whatever gifts you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in various forms. It's very important that we understand and we remember that as we manage our faith, it's our responsibility that it's just like managing money. It's not, it's not that you have a lack of, it's that you're not managing it properly. And so because you're not managing it properly, it feels like when things happen that you have a lack of faith, but it's not a lack of faith. It's a mismanagement of faith. And so as we receive by grace what God has bestowed upon us, we have to make sure that we're managing it appropriately. Key point number one, Wisdom key number one, I want to point out to you, recognize, recognize the gift of faith, recognize the gift of faith. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, it says, for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift from God, not by works. So no one can boast. It is by grace that you have been saved. So say it with me. Faith is a gift. Wisdom key number one, recognize that faith is a gift. Somebody put it in the chat right now. Faith is a gift. Recognize that faith is a gift. Our faith is not 
of uh, our faith is not of our making. We didn't do anything to get it, but it's a gift from God. And so we have to manage this gift that God has given us. Faith is something that we receive by grace as well. And so if you're lacking or if you or if you need help understanding uh, uh, more of what you need to do with your faith, ask God, say, God, I need more faith in this area. And then God will grant that to you. But then you have to manage it. And oftentimes when we ask for faith in an area is given to us in, in a way of challenge, is given to us in a way of test. So don't run from those situations. Look at it as, as an opportunity to increase and to manage more faith. Like any gift, it requires careful handling and appreciation and utilization. What does that mean? Stewardship. You have to manage your faith. Somebody say it with me. Manage your faith. That's right. Manage your faith. Key point, wisdom key number two, responsibility of stewardship. Uh, Luke 16, 10, it says, whoever, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with very much. And whoso, and whosoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with with very much. You're asking for God to bless you with all of these amazing things. You're asking for God to increase this and increase that and expand your territories here. But God is saying, are you managing the little that I've given you to start with? Are, are you managing the, the faith that I've given you to start with? Are you managing the, the $50,000 job? Are you managing uh, 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 the one property that you have? Are you managing the job that you have that you're, that you're making $20 an hour? Are you showing up on time? Are you doing what you're supposed to do? Are you managing when you say you're going to serve at your local church, when you say you're going to be there to help, are you actually showing up on time and doing what you're saying you're going to do? Are you managing those situations that God is allowing you to be in? Are you managing your faith properly or are you mismanaging your faith? It's very important that if you're going to steward your faith, you're going to manage those situations appropriately. Amen. Wisdom key number three, cultivating faith through action, cultivating faith through action. This is probably one of my favorite wisdom keys. James 2, uh, 17, it says in the same way, faith by itself is not accompanied by action, it is dead. In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, it is dead. Faith without action is dead. Faith without works is dead. You can pray. You can ask God, God, give me this. God, help me with this. God, help me understand this. God, I want to make 24 the year of the takeover. But let me tell you, if you just sit here and you don't do anything all year long, you're going to end up in the same place that you were uh, just a few days ago as we were going into the new year saying next year is going to be my year. If you want to make this year the year of the takeover, if you want to make this year one of the best years that you've ever experienced, is going to require you to take some action. What does that mean? If you're getting up at 7 o'clock and you're, and, you're, and you're working your whole day and you're going to bed at 8 o'clock and you don't have enough, I need you to get up a little bit earlier. I need you to stay up a little bit later. If, you, if, you're, if you're doing everything that you know to do and it's still not working, maybe you don't know enough. Maybe you need to take a class. If you're, if you're taking a class and you're not getting the grades that you want, maybe you're not studying enough. If you're trying to lose weight and you're not losing the weight, maybe you're not working out enough. If, you, if you're trying to do this and you're not getting the result that you want, maybe you need to add a little bit extra to this and so you can do a little bit more. My point is, if you're, if you're saying, God, I want to grow in this area and I have faith and I want to grow in this area and God grants you the opportunity to, to get stronger, to learn, to grow, to increase, to, to, to improve the circles that you're hanging around and you choose to take no action behind that, you're going to end up in the exact same place place. I'm not attacking you. I'm just being honest with you because the year that we're in right now, we're in the year of the takeover. We're in the year that we're not asking permission to walk in God's grace. We're in a year that we're not asking permission for the door to be open. If I see, if I see a little bit of light and the door is cracked a little bit, I'm coming in whether you want me to be there or not. If God opens it, I'm coming. And so what I need you to understand, if you're saying I'm going to walk by faith, if you're saying I'm going to manage my faith in a, in a different capacity this year, if you're saying I'm going to manage my faith and I'm going to on purpose grow, what you're saying to me is when challenges come, I'm going to be ready. What you're saying to me is when I have the opportunity to get stronger, I'm going to get stronger. What you are saying to me is I'm not going to continue to make excuses and blame everybody else 
for the results that I don't get for the work that I don't put in. What you're saying to me is that I am going to manage my faith appropriately so I can walk in God's grace and I can see everything that he wants me to see on this side of heaven. What you're saying to me is I am going to be a better me than I was yesterday, than I was last week, than I was last year. I'm not going to compete. I'm not going to I'm not going to be worried about what somebody else is doing, but I'm going to make sure that I'm doing what I need to do. I am going to take a personal responsibility to make sure that the actions that I take increase and grow my faith. I'm going to listen to the right things. I'm going to say the right things. I'm going to surround myself with the right people. I'm going to put myself in growth situations. I'm going to cultivate my faith through actions. James 2.17, I'm going to say it again. For somebody that just clicked on, what is Pastor Charlie ranting about, about faith? The same way that faith by itself, if it's not accompanied by action, is dead. Faith without works is dead. Faith without action is dead. True stewardship involves active participation. Our faith becomes alive and impactful when we put it to action. I'm going to say that again. Our faith, our faith becomes alive and impactful when we put it into action. Serving others, sharing the gospel, and living a life aligned with God's word are ways to nurture and manifest our faith. Serving others and sharing the gospel and living a life aligned with God's word are ways to nurture, take care of, and manifest, develop our faith. And so if I'm saying to you, I need you to manage your faith these next 12 months like you've never managed it before. Everybody lift your hands up right now. That's right. If you're watching, you're looking at me on your phone, the computer screen, the TV, whatever you're watching on right now, lift your hands up. Lord, I thank you that the individuals that are watching right now are going to manage their faith with, with accuracy, with purpose, with understanding, with the new level of zeal, with the new level of love, with the new level of joy. I thank you that this will be a year of the takeover for somebody that's watching because they are going to manage their faith appropriately this year. I thank you that this week, this month, this quarter is going to be the kickoff to one of the best years that they've ever experienced because they are going to manage their faith appropriately. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you believe that, somebody type amen and say, I received that right now. I'm going to manage my faith this year. Wisdom key number four. I'm almost done. The fruit of faithful stewardship. The fruit of faithful stewardship. That's right. Faithful, faithful stewardship does produce fruit. Amen. Um, Galatians 5, 22 through 23, it says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Galatians 5, through 23, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When we steward our faith effectively, it bears fruit that glorifies God and blesses others. When we steward our faith Effectively, it bears fruit that glorifies God and it blesses others. As a believer, we have a responsibility that we have to be a blessing to others. We have to be the head and not the tail. Amen. We have to be the lender and not the borrower. We have to be above and not beneath. We have to be what the world is looking to. One of the scriptures that, that I absolutely love is Matthew 6.33. It says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything else shall be added. And so what that tells me in a very, in a very simple broken down uh, 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 way is that if you read the beginning of the chapter, it talks about these are the things that the world is seeking after. But then it tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of these things shall be added. And so what it's saying to me is that as we're seeking uh, uh, as we're seeking the kingdom, as we're seeking God, as we're seeking God's ways first, all of the things that the world is seeking is going to be given to us. It's going to be added to us. Why is that? It's because as the world is seeking those things, 
and they're not seeking God, and we have those things, they're going to come to us and say, how did you get these things that I'm seeking after? And then it's our responsibility to say, let me tell you about Jesus. Let me tell you about God. Let me tell you about why I'm able to get these things. It's because I'm seeking God first. And so what I encourage you to do is as you are managing your faith, as you are on purpose serving others, as you are on purpose doing these things, just know that it's your responsibility to walk by faith as a believer. It's your responsibility to walk by love as a believer. It's your responsibility to receive everything that the grace of God has bestowed upon us so you can walk by faith and love on as many people as possible. Amen. These fruits are not only for our benefit of, of our, these fruits not only benefit our spiritual journey, but also serve as a testament to others, drawing them closer to God. Matthew 6.33. These fruits not only benefit our spiritual journey, walking by faith, it not only benefits our, our spiritual journey, but it serves as a testament to others, drawing them closer to God. At the end of the day, the only reason that we exist is so we can do God's work. Amen. So we can continue to tell people how good God is. Let me tell you about Jesus and what he did on the cross for me. Let me tell you how much God loves you. Let me tell you that it's not about what you did, but it's about where, where you're going. It's not about what you did, but it's about the testimony that God's going to get from it. It's not about the condemnation, the shame, the fear, the guilt. It's not about any of that, but it's about <clears throat> are you going to be an individual that says, hey, listen, without God, I'm nothing. But I have faith that, that I've received everything that I need through grace. And I'm going to just keep, I'm going to keep as much as possible letting people know how good God is. Because my faith says every single day I'm going to get up and I'm going to try to be better than I was yesterday. My faith says every single day I'm going to get up and I'm going to try to be the best father I can. I'm going to try to be the best husband I can. I'm going to try to be the best whatever it is that I can so I can continue to love on people and let them know how good God is. So they understand they have a fighting chance in this world to continue to win. Because your faith, your faith is your responsibility to manage that. It's your responsibility to make sure that you understand that at the end of the day, it's going to be you and God standing there. And he's going to say, hey, did you use what I gave you? Were you, were you obedient with, with what I gave you? Were, you? were you obedient and said, hey, listen, I'm going to do everything that God is telling me to do. And I trust that if you, if you walk by faith and not by sight, and if you continue to, to, to allow God to grow you, to work on you, to, to put you in situations that your faith will grow and will increase, I trust that this will be a year of takeover for you as well. Hey, listen, I love you. I love you. I hope you got something from this message. I want you to share it with somebody. I want you to comment on it. I want you to, to, to like, subscribe. Make sure and come visit the Now Church if you're here in South Florida. All of the information is popping up. Make sure that you sow a seed. Make sure that this is a season that you do not let an opportunity to sow a seed go by. If you're a tither, this is a great place to tithe into. If you want to sow your offering, if you just want to sow a love seed, you can text it in. The information is popping up now. No matter what you do, make sure that you sow a seed into a good word when you have an opportunity. Make sure you sow a seed. We're in the process of raising $3.5 million for our building fund that we're going to get this year in the takeover, and you can be a part of that. Make sure you sow into that this year. Make sure you let somebody know. If you're in South Florida, you got to go check out the Now Church because they're doing big things and they're taking over. You better catch them while you can get a seat. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I love you. Make sure that when you come here, you let me know. Hey, Pastor Charlie, I saw you online and I came to the church and uh, we love you. We appreciate you. Have an amazing, amazing rest of your week, month, day, year, whatever it is. I look forward to seeing you. Come on, come on, come on. That's what you... <laughs> Thank you for 
hey, let me say thank you for joining us today, man. I love our church. I love all the great things God is doing. And I want to say thank you for joining us. Thank you for sticking around the entire time. Thank you for your comments and your amens. And thank you for letting us know how now church is impacting your life because that's who we are we are people impacting people and we want to say thank you for your participation and joining us in worship at uh, this time and in this service i just want to remind you to make sure you send your prayer requests and your praise reports to prayer at nowchurchfl.com if you have any questions at all anything that we can help you with you can send it to info at nowchurchfl.com or you can call our office and go to our website to get all our contact information, nowchurchfl.com, and you can get plugged into any life group. You can get uh, plugged in and uh, connect with one of our ministers or our pastors. You can also see when the next special events that are coming up, there's so many great things that are always going on here at Now Church, and you'll get a chance to know when those things are happening. So make sure you stay in the know by logging on to nowchurchfl.com. And then finally, it's so important for you to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Make sure you follow us and subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, and our Instagram, even our TikTok. Come on and get behind Now Church and let's continue to take the roof off this thing for the glory of God. Finally, if you didn't get a chance to give, I want to give you that opportunity. My old pastor used to say, never let an offering pass you by. If you are a believer, you should be a tither. You should be taking your first. For tithing is about the first 10%. It is not, 10, God doesn't need a tip. And the church is going to be fine, to be honest with you, with or without you. So tithing is not something, somebody taking something from you. It, it's me trying to get something to you. Because the scripture says, you open the windows of heaven and you pour out blessings where you won't have room when you tithe. That's what the Bible says. The Bible also says that it provokes God to bless us. So I want to challenge you right now to provoke God to bless your life by sowing a seed today and by tithing and continuing to support the gospel. We love you. God bless you. And remember to continue to be people impacting people. God bless.